right. Hello. It's March 26th, and I am so glad that you're here to join us. We are Samilia Co-Founder Interviews, and this is my Co-Founder Interview number two. Last week, we had Jack Zamplin, and this week, we are graced with the rock star, Justin Kilpatrick of Althea. Justin, happy Friday. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good to have you here. All right, Justin. So uh, what we want to do is we want to really get a deep dive into who you are, and what you're doing and, and where you're going and really, you know, your vision on Somalia. So I'm going to start off with a nice low ball, easy question and ask you to tell me, who are you and what were you doing before you even got into this blockchain space? Like, what? Um, so uh, I'm Justin Kilpatrick. I'm co-founder and CTO of Althea. Uh, and, you know, I was, uh, I did a lot of Linux stuff as a kid. Um, I was playing around with open source technology, really excited about open source. Um, and I remember seeing the like Bitcoin white paper and I read it and I'm like, this is really cool. This is revolutionary. And I go around telling everybody it's revolutionary and everybody tells me that I'm dumb. Um, and, uh, <laughs> but I believe I, I have the last laugh on that one. But, you know, just shortly after reading about Bitcoin, um, I was also doing, you know, I was also researching mesh networks, other decentralized technology. You know, I was, was um, ah, fond memories, fond memories. Um, <laughs> I have a very fond memory of, um, I was trying to install Ubuntu on my computer and I nice. completely, and I completely borked it. I was like 12, 13 or something. And so my dad had this big book of CDs in his room. And so I sneak into my parents' bedroom um, <laughs> late that night and I pull the book out and then I go and I fix it again. Cause I immediately, cause immediately after my dad sat down and patiently showed me how to reinstall windows, I went and immediately <laughs> did it again. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> so anyways, That's awesome. um, but yeah, shortly after learning about Bitcoin, I became interested in the idea of mesh networks. Um, and I could really see how decentralized payment for broadband would solve a lot of problems, but I didn't really know how it was going to work. Um, so anyways, I got, I got caught up on, caught up on other projects. Um, you know, for like the end of my high school years, I was running a Minecraft server with a couple thousand players on it. It was, it was nice. a little crazy. Um, very, very, very weird, weird experience, but very fun. And I learned a lot about DevOps there. Um, you know, uh, so I went to college, uh, and I really thought that this whole mesh network plus blockchain thing was going to leave me behind. I'm like, oh, no, it's not the time. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not ready. Um, right. And somebody else is going to get to it before me. And uh, so, you know, I finished college. Um, I get my dream job as a performance engineer at Red Hat, um, you know, working on open source software, doing uh, really, really deep technical performance engineering. Um, and you know, after like a year or so, I was I was just a little bored. Uh, blockchain was getting hot again. And I looked around, I'm like, okay, well, surely somebody solved this problem by now. Surely somebody's got blockchain plus plus mesh networks figured out, really. And uh, the answer was no. Uh, so I'm like, well, this is my shot. I am, I am, I am ready now. The problem has waited for me. Uh, awesome. It's time to go for it. Yeah. Um, and so that's how I ended up uh, founding um, well, I started as just an open source project and then Jahan found me and Deborah found me and Jahan and then, you know, Althea just spirals out from there. So now That's today awesome. we have, you know, we have our operational software. We provide home internet to several hundred homes and businesses. Uh, we're expanding rapidly and we're really presenting a different way to buy bandwidth where the most important commodity in the world is a commodity that anyone can buy and sell. Um, you know, no more. Anyways, I could rant about that for hours, but let's, oh, it's beautiful. Let, let's tone yeah. it down and move on. <laughs> That's okay. And so, so definitely the business of Althea in delivering bandwidth to, to, to millions of households or billions of households, um, had, you know, came upon the cosmos network. You guys came upon cosmos. What was the problem you were trying to solve that brought you to the cosmos ecosystem? Uh, so what brought us to the Cosmos ecosystem was really that we needed micropayments. So it's funny, micropayments are like the headliner feature 
for blockchain. They were what everybody was talking about for a long time. But if you look around, all the major blockchains right now are really bad for micropayments. And that's been the case for years. Um, so we are unusual and that we are going direct to consumer. We have an actual, you know, so like we have a product that is going to normal people like, uh, you know, gas stations, uh, students learning online, uh, teachers, nurses providing telehealth service. Like these are very normal people. Um, mm -hmm. and yep. we have to provide for them something that is, that is normal enough to use. So that means micropayments that are easy and with low fees. Um, and this is the answer of both how we sort of arrived at, uh, at Cosmos and yep. sort of why we ended up getting involved in gravity. Mm -hmm. Um, because we needed a, um, <clears throat> because we need a stable coin. Uh, and the stable coin, the financial system on Ethereum is wonderful, um, but the fees are unacceptable. And if mm -hmm. we want to build a microtransaction system that can serve the world, we need yeah. a lot more scale. Like right of now, course. we are 70% of the non-contract calls, so like the non-DeFi activity, the straight microtransactions on mm -hmm. XDAI. Um, wow, and so you're 70% of non-DeFi or non-trading activity on xdai that's huge yeah yeah okay. so i mean that's all our routers it's just going back and forth um and we originally designed for ethereum we're like okay payment channels are going to solve this problem um we wrote a very efficient payment channel implementation but it's just not good for our use case um mm -hmm. there's too many because you're trying to route payments along with traffic so it mm -hmm. just becomes too complicated because now you're like oh well you know the traffic wants to go here but the payment needs to go here to the channel hub and uh, by the time you solve that problem, and we sat on that problem for months, we're like, how do how do you solve this? Um, how do you decentralize payment channels? And we eventually arrived at the conclusion, it's as complicated as proof of stake. And we're like, well, I've heard about this great proof of stake blockchain system, these people that seem interested in shipping, and they actually have something that works. These are all things that we like because right. we are, we are um, at Althea, we're very big believers that things should be done today. Not right. yesterday, not later, now. So mm -hmm. um, Cosmos like was that. around, mm -hmm. was working well, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, we decided to focus on that. Um, and that's sort of how we got involved in the Cosmos community and sort of farther how we got involved into Gravity. It's sort of the starting of that story there. Got it. And, and what is Gravity? You said Gravity. So tell us more about what is Gravity and why is it important? Gravity is a non-custodial Ethereum to Cosmos bi-directional bridge. So it can take assets from Ethereum and bring them to Cosmos and then back again. It can also take assets from Cosmos and bring them to Ethereum and then back again. Um, and what is really revolutionary about Gravity is that it is neither a full light client nor a limited multi-sig. So these are the two strategies that have been used in bridges before. Um, right. One of which the, uh, the, the, so the light client solution is technically complicated to implement and theoretically the most secure. Um, but you have to have this enormous solidity contract that acts as a light client for your blockchain. So like imagine mm -hmm. writing an entire Cosmos light client in solidity. The fees right. are insane. They're untenable. Um, right. And the other solution is to have a multi-sig. So you have a small multi-sig people, you know, who come in and sign off on things and they're the ones who actually control the bridge. And this is sort of semi-decentralized at best. Um, what gravity is, is that it is a dynamically updated multi-sig. So uh, payments are, so funds are locked into gravity on the Ethereum yep. side. Um, yep. And then they are controlled by the current validator set who has the um, who has complete control of the Ethereum contract through a constant right. series of updates. Um, mm -hmm. So as soon as the uh, so as soon as the validator set changes on Cosmos, it's changed on Ethereum. Okay, that's pretty amazing. And, and yes. tell us more. Okay, so why is this needed? This is needed uh, because well, I mean. I sort of have to have to uh, have to repeat the other things we like about Cosmos, and that is a focus on interoperability. Um, yep. You know, blockchains 
have a lot of potential. Uh, and the thing I like to say about blockchains is that they are a new way to trust. And trust right. is the most important thing in society. You know, like exact, like um, like who is able to do something is uh, who who you can allow to do something is very important. Um, but that doesn't mean that there's going to be a one winning blockchain. Um, right. And cooperation is important. Um, and I, Cosmos, as well as me personally, I don't believe in the one true victor of the blockchain world. I believe there are a mm. lot of different applications, a lot of different things that need to happen. Um, yeah. And that, I mean, there's not going to be one chain to rule them all. That doesn't make any sense. And so okay. Cosmos's vision of cooperation rather mm. than uh, this sort of monopolistic competition um, mm. really appealed to me. And over Got time, it. I, um, it's been borne out. Um, you know, Ethereum is big, uh, provides a provides a good contract abstraction, but is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And right. you know, updates are slow. Change, um, you know, it's but you know, you have chains like Cosmos that can provide very low transaction fees and mm -hmm. uh, different types of functionality. And bringing them together is really useful. So that is that is sort of why I think gravity is needed because it expands that vision of cooperation rather than sort of in mm, yeah I'll just leave it at that it expands Cosmos's yeah. vision of cooperation. Got it. So you are you fully believe in the multi-chain world in the multi-chain future? Yes, I do, um, and that's really backed up by you know what Althea needs. So Althea is supposed to be a micro payments blockchain, but you look around, uh, there are no blockchains that are really good for micropayments. They're all great for finance. Um, right. But you can't pay five bucks to send a 30 cent micropayment. You know, that doesn't work. You need it. And for Althea, especially, you need guarantees about when these payments come in. Like, you know, if somebody is trying to pay for bandwidth, they don't want to get cut off because the chain is overloaded. It doesn't make any sense. Right. You know, that's not an acceptable right. consumer experience. Yep. So we yep. need to define our own chain. And lots of other applications will too. And in fact, I think any application that presents blockchain to normal people is going to need yes. to define some of their wrong rules. Excellent. You know, it's it's inspiring what you're saying, and 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 your thoughts really you know lead to my next question is, you know, you're working on Similier and Althea. Uh, how is the Similier work relevant to what you're doing at Althea, or how is your work on Gravity relevant to what you're doing on Similier? Yeah, so um, I think sommelier is exciting um, because um, when designing Gravity, uh, we sort of stumbled upon uh, what may be the most exciting thing uh, in terms of Ethereum gas optimizations to mm -hmm. ever be sort of put together. And right. that is that uh, because we have mm -hmm. this multi-sig acting as one operator, uh, yep. But it's actually a decentralized group controlling it. You can have external consensus. So over on the so over on the sommelier chain, they can package together a bunch of transactions, and then they can go and run these transactions, and the gas cost will be reduced by as much as ninety percent. Um, and this is because of a quirk of how Ethereum accounts for gas, uh, namely that it costs twenty one thousand gas to open a transaction, and then you pay for all the code that you run. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of operations are just a few thousand gas. Um, so if you get to pay that 21,000 gas once and then bundle everybody's operations using a trustless secondary blockchain, a trustless sidechain, um, yep. you can do things that are just not possible. You have this enormous efficiency advantage. Um, and I think this is another great example of how cooperation between blockchains makes things possible that you wouldn't even think about. Like looking at the Ethereum virtual machine, Nobody seems to have ever thought about well. What if we just put them together? And I was just trying to optimize gas, and then we and then uh, I sort of stumbled upon this, and it's like, well, you know, if we just plug some arbitrary computations in there, we can practically cheat our way out of Ethereum's gas system and right. totally change what is possible. So now you can have this side chain do things on your behalf, bundle calls on your behalf reduce the cost of your arbitrage or other financial operation on Ethereum hugely. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that's 
really impressive, and that's something that definitely should be used for financial applications. So that's why uh, I'm yeah. cooperating with. Um, that is why uh, Alfia is working with Sommelier, and you know, uh, helping them develop the features that they need and integrate those into Gravity, um, yeah. so that we can really take advantage of the absurd potential. Because um, I feel like. There's so many possible things that you can do, especially considering yeah. the insanity that is DeFi right now. I'm not even <laughs> sure I can tell you how many opportunities having a gas price advantage over everybody else gives. Because you right. know, it means that you can trade closer on DEXs, you know, like That's your right. like arbitrage can be tighter, your yeah. um, your sales can be faster, they can be more yes. automated. You can have a decentralized chain waiting to do it all the time for you, observing yes. the chain, yes. um, mm -hmm. observing Ethereum. Um, there's, there's an enormous amount of potential and that was too much to let go to waste. That's awesome. One of the things we hear is that batching, uh, could lead to possibilities of slippage if you have to wait for the batch to be filled, to be executed. What's your thought in batch delays or batches basically causing or exposing folks to price changes on the main chain? Yeah. So, um, Batching uh, can save you. So, okay. First and foremost, um, Gravity Bridge is so efficient that it is at worst um, that if you're just performing an operation, so like, let's say you skip a batch, you say, I'm going to pay yep. for this whole thing myself and just go for it. You're yep. paying what you would pay for another. Um, so like a normal multi-sig bridge, you pay the same price. Um, there's yep. no premium. There's only advantage. It only gets cheaper. Right. Worst case scenario, you need it right now. You pay what you always have to pay everywhere else. Um, so uh, there is there is there's there's no downside to this sort of optimization, um, other than a little bit of implementation complexity, which we have so generously paid for already. Um, <laughs> the 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 to to the user, um, it's just always cheaper. You know, if you can wait for right. a batch, it could be a hundred x cheaper. If you can't wait for a batch, it costs the same as it would otherwise. So right. That's awesome. Okay, so now we're ending the first quarter of 2021. What's next for Q2 2021 for Althea and for Gravity? Well, 2021, uh, right? Yeah, we're still in 2021. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm still writing 2020 sometimes. So yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> um, so what's next for Althea? is that we are working on getting the Althea blockchain launched. Um, and we're working on expanding uh, into our first fiber deployments and our mm -hmm. first LTE deployments and really accelerating uh, what, uh, what we're doing, deploying our paper forward decentralized bandwidth marketplace. Um, because at this point, the software is stable, it's proved out we're at the go-to-market scale-up operations, and we're starting to look into uh, how to really, you know, kick that into high gear. Um, so that's internet service. Then we have the blockchain. The Althea blockchain is going to launch. Um, hopefully quarter two or three this year, we'll see. Um, you know how timelines for these things always yes, go. That's right, um, that's right. And for, and for Sommelier, I am looking forward uh, to getting Gravity stable and online. Gravity is also going to be on the Althea blockchain because we, um, yep. I mean, um, we need it for DAI and just yep. DAI, but why not overbuild? Yep. You know, you know, like um, our philosophy is always to build things that are more reliable and can do more than we need. Um, right. So um, the Gravity timeline uh, is we are working on an incentivized testnet coming up uh, early to mid next month. Um, and that's really going to be the uh, the last big event uh, in parallel with an audit. And then Gravity will be production ready. Um, so at that point, we will be working to get Gravity on the Cosmos hub, um, where users can make uh, maximum advantage of batching with really large batching. Um, and, you know, um, and of course, Sommelier uh, will hopefully be deploying sometime, somewhere in that time range. Um, sure, sure. to make, uh, to take more advantage of like dynamic programs, uh, right. also in batches. 
Um, whereas awesome. the hub will be more focused on just transactions, you know, get your, tra get your money to and from Cosmos as cheaply as possible. Um, I don't think the hub has quite the risk tolerance to go for, we're going to execute all these complicated DeFi transactions in enormous yes. batches as provided yes. by users. It's amazing. So you're working on delivering an Ethereum bridge to really three, three major blockchains, Althea, Cosmos, and Sommelier. Yeah. So, um, my role is really uh, the maintainer of Cosmos Gravity Bridge, you know, that's going to be used by the entire ecosystem. Um, mm -hmm. I foresee that a lot of people are going to be using this. Um, there's, there's definitely been an enormous amount of interest from just about everybody in the Cosmos ecosystem. Um, yes. And uh, obviously the potential, like, you know, so like what you can do with this technology mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is, you know, really impressive and I'm excited to see what people do with it. Um, yeah, that's 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 mostly it. Uh, just focusing awesome. on making sure it's as stable and robust as possible. Yep. Um, and yep. this sort of reflects Althea's telecom engineering background. You know, mm -hmm. um, in like internet service. Uh, so like on your website, an hour of downtime is not so bad. In internet service, right. an hour of downtime is a disaster. Um, right. And it's something that you you're 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 very upset about. Um, so we have a lot of lessons learned about robust engineering, robust design, uh, and building things not only to work well, but to never fail, and to work even 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 when the chips are down and everything's going crazy. Um, and that's what we really need for gravity, because on a Cosmos chain, on you know, so on either side, so like on Ethereum or Cosmos, if Ethereum were to explode for somehow, like you know, explode, halt, all sorts of problems. Um, they just pick a block height and start again. Same thing with Cosmos. Um, mm -hmm. But with the bridge, if you screw up, the funds are lost. You know, the funds are right. locked on Ethereum. They're not going to stop for you. Um, right. So there's there's a level of very rigorous engineering that needs to occur to have this sort of thing work, and more importantly, to have everybody uh, use it. Because there's certainly going to be a lot of consumers and a lot of people uh, interested in using Gravity for very odd things. They're going to push it to absolute limits that I have not thought of yet. And that is the most important thing you need to know as an engineer is that whatever you build, humans are gonna push it harder than you think. Um, right. And you have to be ready for that. You have to be the most pessimistic, like, no, this needs to be stronger than that. Cause somebody's gonna come along and be like, can I do that? Can I just put that in, um, you know, it's like those pictures that you see of like a truck that's piled with hay bales, like five yep. times the size of weight. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is one of those very, very big trucks. Uh, this has been awesome. Uh, Justin, congratulations. First of all, you're leading essentially the key component um, of the Ethereum bridges that are going to be used on three major chains, uh, Althea, Cosmos Hub, and Sommelier. You're a key co-founder in Sommelier. And I think uh, I can't wait for, I think the Cosmos community, the Sommelier community, and the Althea community can't wait to continue to see, to take up the challenge, to push everything that you have uh, built as you know and rigorously built into production so let's uh let's do it and uh thank you again look forward to seeing what's next yeah thank you Tariq. all right cheers bye cheers